All right, if you're a healthcare provider and you need the latest really high yield updates on resuscitation guidelines for adult, neonatal, and pediatric, then you're in the right place. Exactly. We're aiming for a really focused overview, the critical changes you need to know for your practice. Okay, let's shift gears to adult basic life support. Pure technique. Starting with something basic, rescuer positioning. Is there a specific detail there? Yes, and it's about optimizing ergonomics for the rescuer. The patient's chest should be level with the rescuer's knees. Level with the knees. Why that specifically? It just allows the rescuer to use their body weight much more effectively. Reduces fatigue, helps maintain good compression depth and rate over time. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, I can see that. Okay, now for the patient who isn't breathing normally or maybe is apneic but still has a pulse, what's the ventilation rate? The standard now is clear. One breath every six seconds. Every six seconds. Mm -hmm. Which works out to approximately 10 breaths per minute. It's really important to hit that rate. Avoids hyperventilation. Right. Hyperventilation is bad, decreases venous return. But how do we know how much volume to give in each breath? Keep it simple. Use the visual cue. Provide just enough tidal volume to see a visible chest rise. Just visible rise. No need for fancy measurements in BLS. Exactly. Avoid too much. Avoid too little. Visible chest rise is the target. Got it. And what about mechanical CPR devices? Are those becoming routine in BLS? No. The guidelines are clear on this. Routine use is not recommended. Good old-fashioned manual CPR, high-quality measured compressions, it's still the foundation. So the machines have a place, maybe, but not standard for everyone. Right. Specific situations, maybe prolonged transport, difficult environments, rescuer safety concerns, but they don't replace skilled manual CPR as the default. Okay. And finally, for BLS, severe airway obstruction in a conscious adult. What's the sequence? You alternate. Five back blows then five abdominal thrusts. Keep alternating. Until the object comes out, or, and this is critical, until the patient becomes unresponsive. And if they go unresponsive. Then you immediately transition to standard CPR, starting with compressions. All right, moving up to adult advanced cardiac life support. Let's talk cardioversion first. For atrial fibrillation or flutter, what's the guidance on the initial energy level? We're definitely leaning towards hitting it harder sooner. A higher energy level, specifically 200 joules or greater, is preferred for that first shock. 200 joules or more. So oh. don't start low and ramp up slowly. The thinking is, let's not delay effective therapy. Go with a potentially effective dose right away. Okay. Now, drug delivery during CPR. Time is critical. What are the go-to routes? Intravenous, the IV route, is always preferred. That's number one. But if you can't get IV access quickly? Then the interosseous route, IO, must be used. Getting vascular access fast is uh, non-negotiable. And is it true a route we used to use is now out? Yes. Intratracheal drug administration. It's no longer supported. Why is that? Just too unpredictable. Absorption is erratic. Bioavailability is generally poor. So IV or IO only for ACLS drugs. Got it. Let's loop back to that idea of minimizing interruptions. Point of care ultrasound, POCUS. Great tool, but how does it fit into cardiac arrest? It can be considered, yeah, to help diagnose things like tamponade or a massive PE, maybe. But there's a huge caveat. It absolutely must not interrupt chest compressions. Zero tolerance for pauses for ultrasound. Exactly. If you can't get the images you need while high-quality CPR continues without any interruption, then you abandon the imaging. Compressions take priority over diagnosis during the arrest. Full stop. Okay, clear message there. Yeah. Now, a nuanced one. Termination of resuscitation criteria, the TO rules. The update says don't base the decision only on end tidal carbon dioxide. Why have the caution there? Right. ETKOs is a valuable measure, often reflects coronary perfusion. But, you know, it can be influenced by other things, too, like how well ventilation is being done, not just the patient's actual state. So the updated TO criteria need to be applied, considering the EMS level, the whole clinical picture, not just stopping based on one single number, even if it's usually a helpful one. We don't want to stop prematurely. Pediatric life support details. All right, let's move to pediatrics now, covering infants and children. As you said earlier, the main cause of arrest here, similar to neonates but maybe slightly different patterns, is often respiratory problems. What does that mean for our first move? It means airway first. Ventilation and oxygenation support need to start immediately. You have to address the breathing problem right away. It's often the reverse of adults, where we might jump straight to compressions. Here, it's usually airway, breathing, then circulation. Okay. And if a child is intubated or they have a pulse but need breathing support, what respiratory rates are we aiming for? 
The target range is 20 to 30 breaths per minute. 20 to 30. Why that specific range? Helps maintain the right balance, prevents respiratory acidosis or alkalosis. It's a defined physiological target for this age group. Got it. Now, chest compressions for infants, there's been an update on technique, right? Which method is now not recommended? Yeah, this is a key change. The two-finger method, it's explicitly not recommended anymore. So what should rescuers use instead? Either the two-thumb encircling hands method, where you wrap your hands around the chest, no. or for some infants, maybe the heel of one hand technique. These generally give better, more consistent compression depth. Better quality compressions with those techniques. Okay. And if we have an airway obstruction, how does the approach differ between an infant versus an older child? It's a different maneuver. For an infant, you alternate five back blows and five chest thrusts. Chests for infants. Right. But for a pediatric patient, an older child, you alternate five back blows with five abdominal thrusts, like the adult Heimlich maneuver. That difference in thrust location is vital. Good distinction. Okay. Pediatric advanced life support. If you encounter a non-shockable rhythm, like PEA or a systole, what's the immediate priority drug-wise? Epinephrine. Get it in as soon as possible. Early epinephrine administration is clearly linked to better outcomes for non-shockable pediatric arrests. Okay. And after resuscitation, post-ROSC, if you have invasive monitoring, what are the diastolic blood pressure targets we need to maintain? There are specific numbers here. Yeah. For infants, you want to keep that diastolic pressure at 25 millimeters of mercury or greater. And older children? For children aged one year and older, the target is higher. 30 millimeters of mercury or greater. These are real hemodynamic goals now. Helps ensure adequate organ perfusion. Makes sense. And one last critical point for kids post-arrest, neurological recovery. What temperature must we absolutely avoid in comatose children? Hyperthermia. You have to prevent the child from getting a fever. What temperature defines that threshold? Specifically, a temperature greater than 37.5 degrees Celsius. Actively managing temperature to avoid fever is a key neuroprotective strategy after ROSC in kids. Neonatal resuscitation essentials. Okay, let's completely shift gears. Neonates. The whole situation changes, right? Yeah. Usually respiratory failure is a cause of arrest. How does the neonatal chain of care reflect this difference? It's a really significant expansion of the concept. It's not just about the moments after birth anymore. It extends all the way from prenatal care, through birth, resuscitation if needed, and then postnatal recovery and follow-up. It's a whole continuum. Recognizing that stuff happening before birth really impacts the outcome. Absolutely. Maternal health, fetal health, delivery planning, it all feeds into it. And for stable newborns, right after delivery, what simple things are strongly recommended now? Two key things. Delayed cord clamping, 60 seconds or more if possible, that's beneficial. And maintaining skin-to-skin -skin contact between the mother and baby. Good for transition, good for temperature. Okay. Now, if resuscitation is needed, given that respiratory cause, what's the absolute number one priority? The most important task? Ventilation. Effective ventilation. If that baby is struggling, your first and most critical job is getting the lungs working. And how do we know immediately if our ventilation is working? What's the best sign? An increasing heart rate. That's your primary indicator. What are we looking for? You want to see that heart rate climb above 100 beats per minute. That tells you your ventilation is likely effective. Okay, so ventilation first. Watch the heart rate. But what if we've got good ventilation going, maybe even intubated, but the heart rate stays low? Below what number do we have to start chest compressions? The threshold is 60 beats per minute. If the heart rate is less than 60, despite adequate ventilation, and importantly, this is usually recommended after you've secured the airway with an endotracheal tube. Then you must start compressions. Less than 60 after intubation and good ventilation means start compressions. Got it. And finally for neonates, temperature. Why is managing temperature so incredibly important? Because they're so vulnerable. Both hypothermia, getting too cold, and hyperthermia, getting too hot, are strongly linked to poor outcomes. So maintaining that temperature in the right range isn't passive, it's an active, critical intervention. You have to manage it aggressively. Okay, so across the board, these updates really hammer home uh, high quality measured CPR, the need for integrated systems, and these very specific targeted actions based on age and rhythm. Absolutely.